here in last two years. Despite our best international practices, we've lost 11 precious lives. And we have 61 who were wounded. And during COVID, we lost 80 people who worked in the project. Despite losing so many people and having the issues like security and also uh, the location, this project is still on track, sir. Sir, I'd like to uh, just very briefly uh, show you that how is this working. So you are more familiar than this anybody else on development projects. Wabda is the only parastatal in Pakistan which has unparalleled capacity to identify, design, make a feasibility report, construct and operate. And we today, sir, in Pakistan with about 9,387 megawatt in, in terms of his power and in terms of energy, we are producing about 37 billion units. And we do this with only 3 rupees and 15 pesos. Sir, if you see a pie on the right, you have this, if Pakistan is producing 129 billion units, we do that about 37 billion. And this 37 billion, which we produce at the cost of only 3 rupees, this is the core, this is the stability for the entire power sector of Pakistan. And we do all this in line with the SDGs of UN 6, 7, 8, 9. They talk of climate, they talk of clean energy. Uh, sir, our journey to uh, resurgence started once we did these four projects. We did Kachi Canal in 2017. We did uh, Golan Gol in January 18. We did Tarbela Fort in March 18. And we did Neelam Jhelum in April 2018. So these projects were stuck for years, if not decades. Having done this successfully, this is what gave us a very good revenue streams and the experience and confidence to do the more projects. I'll just take you to the history, not a very far history, recent history. This is what was uh, done in terms of those projects, which is ever willing to make a contribution. Their expertise, their professionalism, their level of confidence uh, probably can match the best of the team in the world. And that is what took them to really do, undertake these 10 projects which we are talking today. Sir, before I go to these projects, let me tell you, sir, this index which is passing in front of you, the place where it enters in pa current area of Pakistan at LOC, it Hamzi Hund. It has about 17 million acre feet water. Once it comes down to Skardu, the water increases to about 30 million acre feet by virtue of having tributaries like sugar into it. And if you go about 100 kilometers upstream to Bunji, it goes up to 50 million acre feet water. Every year from here, we have 50 million acre feet water passing downwards. Once it reaches Sarbella, it becomes 60 million acre feet water. We have Kandia and Dubair River joining in. And from Tarbela downwards, once you have Kabul and Swan coming into this, it is 90 million acre feet water at Kalabakh Dam. Of this 90 million acre feet water, Mr. Prime Minister, we save only 6 million acre. This is a criminally low storage in the world. In Jhelum, you have 24 million acre feet water every year. We store 7 at Mangla and we store nothing at Chanab, which is about 26 million acre feet water. So 90 plus 24 and 26 is about 145 million acre feet water, and we store only 13 million acre feet. By virtue of doing these projects, by about 28, 29, we will be adding 11.7 million acre feet water. And sir, we'll be adding in par more than 11,000 megawatt which will be in terms of 44 billion units, adding to current 37 billion units. So by end of these projects, we would have shot up more than 120% in power, and we would have added about water storage of more than ever debt on their financial landscape. And we went and explored the possibilities of reaching out to ESG funds, environment funds, and also to emerging markets, venture markets, and equity markets. And for that, we had one of the best uh, financial institutions operating with us. So this is uh, just to give an overview of this, that uh, the three major projects what we are doing. This is Moment Dam, the Niamir Basha Dam part, 
the Amir Basha power generation, the Amir Basha land, Dasu. So in all in all, right bottom corner, this is 2.6 trillion rupees projects which are underway. In all this, Mr. Prime Minister, 2.6 trillion, the government of Pakistan will be chipping in only 648. But more importantly, it is Vabda would be arranging 6.12 dollars because it started in, of course, 2019, and the government was overstretched. So we ventured out to the market, and what did we do? We first put on house in order, and we took, we took a step of going for the international rating by not one, by all three rating agencies, Fitch, Moody's, and S&P. And you'll be happy to hear that we became the first parastatal in Pakistan to secure the stable outlook by all three. Then we went over to the market and we were able to raise a green euro bond, which I'll explain a little later. So, Bhasha, like I said, this is a place with the future destiny of food security and energy security of Pakistan is dependent on. We'll have a gross capacity of 8.1 million acre feet and 6.4 of a life. And other than that, this will provide 18 billion units in, in terms of power. And a single day of delay in Diyamir Basha is causing us loss of $5 million in direct and $25 million in comes of indirect effect. So once we started, so what were the major challenges we took? Of course, it's a gestation period is more. It takes seven to eight years. It is very capital intensive. So government is pretty fragile on to this one. Pakistan itself does not have a very high end engineering capacities. And approvals takes about 26 to 28 months for a project. And the last is also a, a very negative impact on the development because you have issues like PEPRA and Audit and NAP. They become a very big challenge to do the projects. We've been able to do this despite all this. So just a brief, you are very familiar with the features that this is going to be a, the tallest RCC dam in the world. And uh, we have 50 meters subsurface and of the rock kind what you have, we have a Gabronite family available here. And this is the best rock to construct a dam. And the structure of the rock under the river is just like a bowl. That's a gift of a god to Pakistan. We only need to put a dam there. So its capacity is 8.1 is gross and 6.4 is uh, the life capacity. It will produce 4,500 megawatt. And uh, we'll have two powerhouses. One, the right one would be located in the GB, and the left one would be located in the province of KP. Its time is 8.5 years. Sorry. And uh, of course, this PC1 power generation is 9.33. The land is uh, 174, and we commenced the work on 7th August of 2020. <clears throat> So this is the structure. Uh, you are sitting just where uh, we have the intake structures right here. So the, look at the advantages it has. Instantly, we have 16,500 jobs created for the project. And uh, we'll be training more than 1,000 engineers here. And putting together of moment and also at Dasu, the Pakistan would have a new crop of engineers on hydrology, who, about 1,600 of them who will be taking Pakistan's in future. We have cement, pozzolone uh, for transport requirements. In development, we're spending 78 billion rupees and have 18 million units. It will increase the life of the Bela for 35 years. And it will run into $2.5 billion saving every year. And it will be able to irrigate of land of 1.23 million acre. So this is a consultant what we have. Uh, we have Stentec. Earlier on, they were called as Montgomery Hartza. And, uh, and we have from Switzerland, Dolsal from Turkey, Mott McDonald from UK. We have a NESPAC and an ACE and Mott Bogdan Pakistan as a partners with them. So we are very fortunate to have on the board of management 
Mr. Michael Rogers, who is also the president of International Commission of Lodge Dams, and the other people you can see their profiles. Sir. We have Sir uh, Power Shine and, and FWO, they are the civil works with us. And uh, there are a couple of technical challenges which we are facing to construct. First is the seismic hazard assessment. So this is a, a very uh, high seismic zone. It was prone to seismic impact. And its location close to Asiatic plate. So we had to undertake a very extensive studies. And we had to work out, for example, what happened in 2005 in Pakistan. It was 7.5 reactors which uh, originated from Kashmir. It results into some kind of a ground acceleration. So this, at this point, it led to 0.11 G ground variations, whereas our project here is caters for 0.64. So it is five times more with the maximum expected earthquake ever in Pakistan. So, so we had a Dr. Nick Gregor, and uh, they are the best expert in seismic, and Dr. Norm, they are working with us. They've been extremely useful on the seismic studies. In flood estimations, sir, in case we work out the GLOF system in Indus, it's extremely dangerous and critical. You have the glaciated lake outburst flood. They could come at any times. And since it's a very erratic river, so we had to be absolutely uh, accurate onto this one that if you work out on the 100 years turnaround, what's going to be the max PMF, possible maximum flood. So we had the services of Dr. Reynold and Dr. Martin to have the flood estimation studies. And sedimentations, like I said, that this Indus carries about more than 10,000 million cubic meter sediments at any one time. So we had to work out that in case we don't do uh, good technical work on the sediment studies, this project could end up his life in just about 55 years. But having done those with the, with the techniques of using the low-level outlets, the techniques of managing the sediments, and using the diversion tunnels available and open channel available, so life of the project has been a couple of hundred years. So, so RCC design itself, it, we have the two issues here. There are, you'd be surprised to know there are no international companies who had uh, the experience of even laying uh, the concrete for more than 10,000 cubic meter, 10 million cubic meters. This is involving more than 17 million cubic meters. And this tallest dam in the world, and the spillway design has been embedded inside the dam. So that is what it called for an extraordinary uh, focus on that. And uh, we had a good expert on for this both, RCC placement and uh, also for the design part of itself. Diversion system, sir, will take you from here. Imagine this river, this be going through a tunnel and open channel for at least five to six years. So we have to be extra careful in taking the river Indus because Indus is mammoth, it is unforgiving. So the diversion system had to be done in a way that where the integrity and safety of those diversion tunnel and open tunnel had to be ensured. And uh, even if the project, God forbid, is delayed for a couple of months, so they should be constructed on the design which is good enough to take entire Indus for a specific period of time. And we have underground uh, powerhouses on both sides. We had to really struggle with the kind of a geology on both sides of the rivers. So that has been done a uh, fantastic job by the experts. This will give you a general profile that how does this make a logistic nightmare for this project. Starting from crush, which is about 27 million tons, the sand of 11 million tons, steel, the cement, and uh, of course going down all the with the vehicle flow of more than 150. You could have at the peak more than six to 700 vehicles passing one day. We are in a very uh, comprehensive logistic uh, plan, Mr. Prime Minister. Starting from, um, we have our base uh, place called Hatia. So we have parking areas, we have our traffic control systems, we have logistic warehouses, and we have six sites right here where the logistic is being dumped. So without any interruptions or impediment into the activities, we are managing all this logistic support here at the site. So I make a mention of uh, cultural heritage plans. So you have about 37,000 petroglyphs dating from thousands here on the rocks in this. 
under the international regime, we are supposed to have a protections of all those cultures. What we have done is that we have made a cultural heritage plan. We are taking two and three D pictures of that, and we are making a museum at Chalas where they'll be preserved all of them. In some cases, we are moving those rocks which are not very heavy to move. But once we do this, the Chalas museum will become the one of the major attraction for the tourist in Pakistan that they have something to see which is dating back to 900 BC. So this plan is in place and uh, we have some very good experts who are doing this job for us. It was initially designed by a you know, German uh, uh, archaeologist. He has recently died but the team is continuing to work with us. So this relocation of KK, you had a, a brief look while we were flying in. We had the trouble of uh, continuing work uninterrupted on the main dam because there's a huge traffic which goes through this one. So we've been able to connect it this about 40 kilometers um, area and it bypasses the entire project. This gives us more space and this should also help us to save on more times. So this is that road which you saw. No, the recommendation, sir. <laughs> Uh, so this has already been approved by ECNIC, so our only recommendation is that of the 30% uh, commitment by the government, there should not be any interruption in cash flows and we continue to...